What's up, everybody? <gasps> it's your boy Uchi and um, back again. How y'all doing? How y'all doing today? Doing today? Doing What's going on, guys? Your boy Uchi, and we have a quick day one review post stream. That, by the way, if you guys were there, I really appreciate and thank everyone that was witnessing me breaking a new milestone, which was. I finally had a stream on Twitch that surpassed 100 views. We finally broke 100 viewers on this, John. I'm super excited. I'm super happy about that. And I have all I have it all to thank. I have all you guys to thank that came in, supported, and watched me play the game that I've been hyping up and have been really, you know, getting all you guys hyped up for battle of the grid now this is a power ranger fighting game for those that still don't know and i'm here to tell you guys my get my and i'm here to give you guys my day one review on what i think about the game it's going to be very quick easy straight to the point i'm going to knock all these bullet points down that i have in front of me and kind of elaborate on the pros and the cons and what my overall opinion of the game is and why you should definitely consider picking this one up so let's get let me get all of the pros the good things out of the way first so the first pro that i have here is that it's easy to pick up it is so easy to pick up that it is a six button game where it is simplified into light medium heavy and then special rather than you doing quarter circles half circles full circle motions in other traditional fighting games this game has simplified it so that way you only have to hit one button to get your special moves out and then of course by hitting that in combination with other buttons you get other types of moves like your zord call and your super special move it is fun to enjoy this game is so fun like i will matter of fact actually have to upload the vod of my very first stream playing this game because i was like yelling the entire time i had so much fun interacting with the entire stream and i had so much fun just playing getting my hand on a power ranger fighting game like 3v3 action is not really my forte but like as long as i got power rangers on the screen for whatever reason it just makes it that much more enjoyable so the game right now has nine characters and i do include this into the pro section because i feel like a tight roster gives players a little bit more um, leeway to explore so that way they may they maybe not they, they won't feel as overwhelmed because sometimes when you're given a fighting game and you have a lot of characters um, at the base I feel like that gives people anxiety and I think that looking at a whole screen full of characters not to say that that's bad because I know that at the end of the day if I'm playing a game like Smash Bros I love when they add every single freaking person in there but as far as this goes i think that when it comes down to a brand new fresh game that is starting its series hopefully that you know with a solid nine character roster with the potential of it come going up to 15 if we're going to well i'll get into that later i think that having this tight roster is really cool because then it can it can allow players and give them the motivation to explore and to try out other things with the full roster and as i talk about the roster i also do want to mention that this game has a character for you it literally entices and it gives all kinds of appreciation to all types of play styles whether you like to play the distance game where you want to be super aggro or you want to be a little bit more technical this game literally got a character for you you like big bodies we got goldar if you like game mixed we got gia and we got cat if you just want to freaking yell out dragon zord well we definitely got a bunch of tommies for you to play the game is beautiful. The graphics actually look amazing, and this is off of someone that's been playing it on the Switch. I don't have it on the Xbox One, but I will have it for the PlayStation 4 as well. And that it is super crisp, and it looks super good, and I'm actually super happy, and it just makes me feel like they really try to make this not just play well, but it looks just as good. And I think that it's, 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 it's polished enough that I don't know if they could ever advance the graphical features of this to a point where it would surpass this. I mean, sure, they could probably if you know if even if it was in the hands of other developers but as far as anyway games go they did a great job making this game look very nice and it is very pleasing to the eyes now crossplay is definitely a feature added into battle of the grid now unfortunately for playstation users you guys will be playing for yourselves or you guys will be playing with yourselves um against each other because you know that's on sony that's really not on a playstation problem but xbox one Nintendo Switch and presumably PC will all be able to play together um, online. The price, the price at base, so this is not including the digital deluxe, it's not including any of the DLC, 
or the character skins. The game is $20. They made it apparent that they wanted everyone to come out and play this game. They wanted people to have no excuses to give it a chance. They've given us a versus game. They're giving us a game where it's 3v3 format. There's a lot of things going on. It's a hype game. A lot of cool, flashy things going on. Combos, Megazords, and the finisher moves. Like, this game is amazing and it actually for the price range it really does fill a lot of voids for people that really don't know what they want to play with all these fighting games out there i think that if you're definitely a power ranger fan you will love battle for the grid and the last thing that i have on my pros list is that it has the dragon ball effect now with the dragon ball effect i have to explain myself a little bit the dragon ball effect is essentially where dragon ball fighters comes into play dragon ball fighters is a game made by arxis and they made a Dragon Ball fighting game, the most legitimate fighting game out of all the other Dragon Ball fighting games that there are. And they made it so hardcore and at its core a very professional and competitive fighting game that they, they introduced the fighting game players from the FGC to the Dragon Ball fans. I feel like a lot of Dragon Ball fans picked this game up and started playing this and at the same time you know, cross paths with a lot of the veterans out there that are playing all these games as it is. So I feel like with Power Rangers, it definitely has that same effect where we're seeing a lot of Power Ranger fans pick this up out of the sheer excitement that, wow, it's a brand new Power Ranger game. It's a Power Ranger fighting game. And I'll be able to play this by myself online and with friends, which we'll get into um, hopefully, you know, when lobbies do come out, which is on my list on cons, which we're going into right now. So my cons thankfully are not as much as my pros go, but definitely some stuff that I have to address. Now again, this is just a reminder, this is a review based off of my full five hour session playing it live on stream last night at the time of this recording so again like i said i'll make sure that i will most likely try to get that entire vod up on my youtube because it was such a fun experience that i at least have to get you know a good chunk of it on the youtube channel here so that way you guys can see that i have not seen it on twitch live yet for those that do you guys know exactly how much fun i had and again like i said to reiterate this is my review off of that one five hour session i really explored the game to its potential and here we go with the cons so unfortunately there was some changes leading into the surprise release of the game because again they did not specify exactly when i'm not saying that's a con i'm saying that at the initial reveal it was confirmed and it was you know stated in in a couple different articles from developers that were interviewed that shared information was that there was going to be a 15 roster at base for the game not including dlc now later on once we got clo a lot closer to the release i want to say like maybe like a few weeks ago they changed that number they literally removed all of the blank tiles on their website and then shorten it down to nine now you might see this as a problem you might see this as like them lying to us i just feel like this is all a part of a bigger plan and they are being very calculative as to why they are making the moves that they are making. So with that all being said and taken into consideration, I do have good faith and good hope that the other six characters that are in Limbo will still be here and this won't even affect the DLC that has confirmed three characters. Also, in addition to that, the bundles were very misleading. So initially you would think when you have a game that all the features for a collector's edition for a deluxe edition would all be the same across the board you know minus like the retail exclusives and whatnot like if you pre-order it at gamestop you pre-order it at target even if you pre-order at walmart or amazon but this is a digital only game there is no physical release so there has no there should be no reason for there to be any type of differences however the xbox one pre-order um, digital deluxe bonus was actually an art book that the Nintendo Switch nor the PlayStation and to my knowledge the PC will not be getting. Everyone else stuck with the three character skins and the season one DLC pass and that's where it stops. And of course as a pre-order bonus you do get the Evo 2 skin off Lord Draken 
but again it is missing the art book now another thing that i do want to add is that one of the things that was misleading about the xbox one bundle was that apparently it was supposed to come with an extra code to give out to someone else so like it goes alongside with what they were trying to make apparent with the initial goal and you know like the direction of this game was that they wanted everyone to play it they wanted everyone to have it in their hands to give it a fair chance and especially at the price range it's like come on you can spend 20 bucks or you can spend another 20 to get the deluxe edition you get all the cool skins the characters and then if you're playing on the xbox you get an extra code to just give it to somebody now that's really cool, and that's a cool idea, especially if you're only paying 40 for it, not even meeting up to the expectations of every game that comes out nowadays at 60 bucks. And this bundle was saying that they were gonna give away free codes. Now if I saw that a little earlier, I might have actually had to dust off my Xbox One just so that I could play it on the Xbox One. But apparently according to users that um, were playing on Xbox, that was not the case. They actually did say, I someone told me this, that they worded it wrong and it was very misleading and I, I, I would hope that they apologized for it. That was something that I did not see personally with my own two eyes. But nonetheless, it was the changes that were made after what was said and shown to us was definitely had to be first on my con list. Second is probably one of the more um, known things about the game so far is that matchmaking is very buggy. Now I'm not saying the quality of the matches are buggy but the fact that and simp to put into simple terms you literally cannot block low attacks and they have addressed this and they have said that they are actually on, in the process to put out a patch in the coming days to fix this issue and on and to my knowledge as well this is only um, happening in online matches so that can affect people that are really trying to grind it out and get their leaderboard placement up there but unfortunately right now you're gonna have to deal with getting mixed and it's gonna hurt another con is that everyone seems to have an infinite now i know that that might not be a con to a lot of people because of course you just want to get in there body some people and be out right but unfortunately that is not the case with a lot of other people that are trying to learn the game and not trying to just get you know tod touch of death by one character the entire match and it kind of just sucks the fun out of it all i also bring this up as on my con list because that is something else that they said during their streams that they said that there will not be any infinites and what do we find on day one green ranger has an infinite goldar has an infinite even cat max has an infinite everybody has an infinite so it's kind of wild that literally after only not even a full 24 hours of the game being released that there were infinites already being discovered and the damage is all there there's really no scaling which is kind of funny because the game hits pretty hard for the most part and there is a lot of chip damage especially with the megazords and just having these infinites kind of defeats what they had already told us initially so who knows if all of those infinites will get patched out in you know the coming days weeks and lifespan of the game so we'll see where it goes from there and as i was saying before chip damage is a real factor in this now i will say this it is on my con list i will have some logic behind it that i will be revealing as well in addition to this being on my list so for chip damage for those don't know is when you are holding block and someone's trying to attack you and you're blocking their attack successfully but you're still taking little tiny bits of life away you're getting that life uh, remove, subtract it, however you want to word it, um, away from your life bar, and ultimately, if you get chipped out, you will die. You won't. This is not a game like Street Fighter V where you will you can hold block the entire time, and even if you have no health or like one health, you can you can hold that block and just hold that block string, all that kind of stuff, and you will not get chipped out unless it's by critical art of course but in this game you can get chipped out just by by anything if you're at that one hit point away and you take that hit guess what Pfft, you're dead if you get chipped out by a megazord you're dead if you freaking take that big dragon nope not gonna go there so my logic to that is like come on guys this is a power ranger fighting game and of course they introduced the megazords now let me tell you and let me ask you a question when was the last time you saw any of the rangers one-on-one -on -one take on a freaking megazord and live to tell the tale any kind of time there was any kind of monster they always had to go into the damn megazord they didn't see the reverse it was not power rangers versus 
big ass monsters. It was always Power Rangers versus Monster. Monster grows. Okay, we're gonna grow now too in our Megazord, so the fight is still even. Well, if I'm getting stomped on, if I'm getting tail smacked, if I'm getting punched by freaking big ass Goldar, well, guess what? That's a lot of chip damage, of course, that I'm about to take and eat. And that is just a part of the meta I feel like will definitely be a factor in the longevity of the game. And it, does, it definitely is the replacement for an X Factor type of feature if you will there's a chip damage it's a con maybe they could patch it or maybe balance it a little bit better maybe they can remove said chip damage to not be as much and as overbearing because sometimes you'll be in situations where it's just like well if i'm down to a, my last character and they're down to the last characters literally whoever gets their zord out wins because it is very rare unless you are a really woke magnet defender who has super good counter and can avoid getting hit by simply catching you in the counter, grabbing you, literally, and if your timing is, is impeccable, then it is, you have a 10% chance of avoiding avoid getting hit by a Magnet Defender. I actually do have a part of that stream um, last night where I actually thought I had the match in the bag. I had him down to the last character, had my Dragon Zord come out, Dragon Zord came out, he literally yeeted all of my offenses and clutched it out for the victory. Well deserved, I guess. Couple more things here. Second to last I have on my list is tutorial isn't as in-depth. So that's something that I was very surprised about. They only really covered the bare minimum necessities. They did not even go over like the EX attacks. They didn't even go over the, the, the Megazords at all. It was literally just the simple movement, attacks, the S button, which is your special button. And that's basically it it was the probably one of the shortest tutorials i've ever seen and it's kind of surprising that they went about it that way and it's kind of a shame at the same time and last but not least the biggest issue the biggest con that i have here on my list and you know overall for this review of battle for the grid is the fact that there are no lobbies now it goes with saying that in nowadays it's almost like rare if you have a fighting game that just comes packaged with everything that you would expect it to come with. Arcade mode, a good tutorial, a good training mode feature, online play, ranked, casual, and then you got your lobbies. And then of course, as a bonus, you know, a lot, like an illustrious cast of characters. And the fact that this is yet another game that is missing a very essential piece of its puzzle it kind of deteriorates some players not me but it deteriorates a lot of players because they want to go right into it they want to lab with their friends online they want to just play with their friends online and they want to just start lobbies and play with viewers like myself because that would have been something i would have loved to do on my stream have an open lobby play with the viewers and literally have fun with it having the ability to play casual matches and ranked matches is great and all but having no lobbies very much defeats the purpose of having a fighting game where you have multiplayer features but you can't play with the people you immediately want to play with unless they live with you or they are in close range to play offline matches now aside from all the cons and the pros what well, one thing i do want to add that i think i i kind of touched upon a little bit earlier was that anyway the company the the developer behind power rangers battle for the grid has been very communicative and they've been acknowledging a lot of the faults and just about everything with the game with us via twitter they've been doing a very good job reaching out to the players its community and they've been letting us know that they're aware of certain issues and that they have plans and are going about it in a very forward motion way that they you know they want to address and not, not pretend like they're just leaving us off in the back burner like bandai <clears throat> sorry and they will be fixing things just like the low blocks um and also a lot of people were having issues with download codes not getting them on time or just not getting them at all they've actually made up for that and if you pre-ordered deluxe edition and you so for some reason didn't get the code they actually gave you the standard edition so that way you could at least start playing the game and once the deluxe edition became available to you they were actually just going to go and still give you that deluxe edition so that's really good look on uh the staff behind nway games and battle of the grid i appreciate that even though it didn't happen to me i was fortunate enough to get my code on time and of course, I had to wait for the eShop to get it, um, to, to refresh their, their page, so that way I could simply just download the game. But again, that's not on them, that's on Nintendo. What's wrong with y'all? But overall, looking at all the pros and the cons, a lot of things that are definitely addressable, like they have, they plan on making these fixes. And as far as that goes, 
a lot of pros, a lot of good stuff. You have a really beautiful looking game. You have a really fluid game. The gameplay works. The mechanics and the systems actually make a lot of sense. Now, the only real things that I have issues with right now is just obviously the low blocking, not being able to block lows, but that's being fixed. And of course the chip damage. So who knows if they're gonna adjust the chip damage enough who knows if they're going to take these infinites away that they said that there was going to be no infinites. That's completely besides the point. But that is my complete day one review of Valve for the Grid. If I haven't convinced you that you should be getting this game, you should definitely check out my first stream that I did. I had so much fun. Like I said, a milestone was achieved. I broke 100 viewers for the first time. I had I peaked at like 133, had like over 70 new followers. It was a really good time and stream for about five hours playing in arcade mode did a little bit of training and then the rest of the stream the bulk of it was just playing casual and ranked matches so with that being said guys let me know all of your thoughts about battle for the grid let me know your pros and cons in the comment section as well and please don't forget to hit that like button subscribe and ding the bell because youtube be on that funny stuff sometimes and remember take care of yourself have a great one may the power protect y'all i'll see y'all next time